Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Good day. This is the Valder Beebe Show, broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas. Who do I have in the studios with me? Hi, this is uh, Jonathan Zager from Tampa, Florida. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for joining us. And I heard that you had critical information that could change our lives. What do you know that we need to know? Well, I'm here to, today to talk about melanoma and the treatment of primary and metastatic when the melanoma spreads. Okay. Why... Can I ask you, why, why such high statistics for people with this condition? Well, there's about 75,000 cases of melanoma that's diagnosed in the United States per year. It is the third most common cancer, uh, skin cancer, behind basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. So it's rare, but unfortunately, there's about 10,000 deaths per uh, year in the United States from metastatic melanoma. So it's rare but deadly. So, we're, you know, the earlier the diagnosis, the easier the treatment, and the better the prognosis. So how do you make a determination or investigate or tell your doctor, I think I have this, even before you get to that stage where the doctor is telling you, is there any way to find this out? Yeah, uh, you know, any, uh, anybody should be examining their skin once a month, looking for any changing lesions, any crusting or scaling lesions, any moles that have changed color or in symmetry have border irregularity or that might be bleeding. These are signs that it could be something bad. Not always is it something bad. And at that point, you want to go to your dermatologist or primary care physician to have it looked at and possibly biopsied. Again, the earlier we can diagnose these skin cancers, especially melanoma, the easier the treatment and the better the prognosis. I have a Facebook question for you, and this question says, is melanoma inherited? There's very little um, inherited melanoma. Most melanomas are caused by the sun, and they, they're not really genetic and passed down from generation to generation. I have a Twitter question for you. Okay. My skin is very, very fair. Am I at more risk than other people? With fair-skinned, light, light eyes, light hair, fair-skinned people, they are at more risk for sunburns. And the more sunburns you get, blistering sunburns, the greater the chances that you can get melanoma and any other skin cancer. So fair-skinned people have to pay, pay particular attention to putting on sunscreen, reapplying it, and wearing some sun protective clothing if they're out in the sun all day long. What, uh, that would lead into my next question. Prevention for melanoma? Sunscreen is the best way to prevent it. So you can avoid the peak hours of the sun outside, apply sunscreen, reapply it every few hours, make sure you apply sunscreen after you get out of the pool or if you're sweating, wear sun protective clothing like hats and long sleeve SPF shirts. Those are all ways that we can help prevent the, uh, the incidence of melanoma and, and other skin cancers. Jonathan, this is what you do every day, obviously, you're a medical doctor. Have you seen any breakthroughs in this, field, in this disease for us? There's been some um, great breakthroughs in the past five to seven years. Previously, about 10 years ago, we only had chemotherapy to treat metastatic melanoma, which is where it spreads from that primary tumor on your skin to any organ in the body. In the past five to seven years, we've been seeing great advances with targeted therapies, immunotherapies, and most recently, an oncolytic viral therapy called Imlygic. Imlygic is a herpes virus that has been modified or engineered to be able to be injected into unresectable, meaning I can't cut it out, 
metastatic melanoma after the initial surgery. This herpes virus will cause the melanoma cells to rupture and die. Although it hasn't been shown to improve overall survival, and we don't use it in immunocompromised patients or patients with widespread disease, I've been using it in my practice quite often in the appropriate patients, and I've seen about one-third of the patients have a good response from the therapy. Thank you so much. Is there a place online that my audience can get more information to build their arsenal of information about this disease? Absolutely. Imlygic.com, which is spelled I-M-L-Y-G-I-C.com. You can go on the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, nccn.org, or you can go to our cancer center, moffitt.org. Dr. Jonathan Zager, thank you so much for being my guest and talking about such an important subject. I really appreciate this, and I know my audience does. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.